Hello, everyone, and welcome. So happy to have you here. We'll just wait a few minutes while we wait for the other attendees to arrive. While we're waiting, my colleague has dropped in a poll. So we're interested in how are you feeling coming into the webinar today? Are you energetic? Are you excited? Are you ambivalent? Are you apprehensive? Are you anxious? or are you other? So feel free to let us know how you're doing. Okay, I see a lot of other, so I'm excited. I definitely feel excited to be here with you today. A few energetic, that's always good. Tuesday afternoon. Wonderful, we'll wait maybe one more minute and then we'll get right into it. And for those of you who just arrived, we're doing a poll about how are you feeling today coming into the webinar. Great, okay, so let's get started. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us this afternoon for the 100 Spotlight on Qatar Information Session in partnership with the Qatar Foundation. We're happy to have you here. My name's Katija Aladdin. I work as the head of community at 100 and I will be the host for the session. For the next 35 to 40 minutes, we will hear from Jennifer Yacoub, who is the Partnership and Business Development Manager at Pre-University Education at the Qatar Foundation. We'll then hear from Lasse Leponyemi, who is our Executive Director at 100, and Chris Petri, who's the Head of Research at 100. At the end, we will open it up for a Q&A and we're, we'll answer any questions that you've had throughout the session. Just to note, please write any of your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom window and we'll get back to them at the end. So a few points just to note before we move forward. Firstly, the session will be recorded. Secondly, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions throughout the session, please put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom link and we'll get back to them at the end of the session. And the third is all this information will be shared with you at the end. So if you miss something, don't worry, you can go back to it after that. With that being said, it's my pleasure to invite Jennifer to the virtual stage. Jennifer, it's all yours. Thank you, Katija. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for making the time to attend your first Qatar Spotlight information session. Uh, I know it's after your school day, so it's been uh, it's at the end of a long day, I'm sure. Um, for those of you uh, who don't know me, I manage partnerships at Pre-University Education and Qatar Foundation. Uh, my name is Jennifer, and um, Qatar Spotlight is one of our key partnerships uh, with global organization 100. The reason uh, for partnering with 100 is because they have extensive expertise in working with schools to identify what are some of the key innovative practices within the schools. So within the K to 12 segment, they're quite experienced in identifying innovative practices and then sharing them with the world. And we thought we wanted to bring this to Qatar. And this was the reason for partnering with 100 to launch the Qatar Spotlight. Uh, we strongly believe that there are many such practices within your schools, within across the different schools in Qatar. As a school leader, as a teacher, as an administrator in the school, you've come across these practices. Something that has been implemented in your school and is working really well, has positive results with the students, and you know that if another school was to take up these practices, it would really have a huge positive impact on them as well. So during the next 20 to 25 minutes, um, let's listen to Lassie and Chris and understand from them, what are some of these innovative practices that Qatar Spotlight is looking for? And how can we submit uh, these innovations to Qatar Spotlight? I think it's a great opportunity to build credibility around your practice and be recognized as one of the education, educational innovators in the country, as well as the 100 team will then work with you uh, to create a short video and share your innovation on their different global platforms. So I really hope we are able to sort of reach there and understand from them how we can work with them to submit our innovations. Thank you so much, Katija. 
Thank you, Jennifer. We are definitely really excited to be working with the Qatar community on this. I will now invite Lassie Leponyemi to share a little bit about 100 in the spotlight. Thank you, Katitsa, and thank you, Jennifer, for the kind words. My name is Lasse Leponiemi. I'm the co-founder and executive director at 100. And it's our great pleasure to be working with Qatar Foundation uh, to highlight the education innovations from Qatar. Uh, to start with, I want to introduce you our organization 100. So we are a Finnish uh, nonprofit organization working in the field of uh, education from kindergarten until to the secondary education, uh, identifying impactful education innovations around the world. Uh, to this day, we have been going already over 5,000 different kinds of educational innovations, uh, which are seen impactful and scalable uh, to improve education at scale in their own context. And our goal is to help improve every children's life through these educational innovations. And our hope is that, that in the future, there would be ever larger number of children uh, who would be able to access good quality education where they are. And this is the reason why we are hosting this webinar today. I'm seeing that we have already a little bit over 200 attendees participating to this webinar today. And I bet that in your schools, in your classrooms, in, in the context where you are helping students to learn, there are beautiful, amazing things happening, how, how, how they learn and how they can, how they can achieve new skills uh, for themselves. Uh, as, as a hundred uh, every year, when we are identifying these innovations, we are creating a hundred global collection. And hundred global collection uh, is a collection of impactful and scalable innovations around the world. And it holds always hundred innovations. And that is actually where our name comes from. So we believe that by identifying and highlighting this kind of great educational solutions and practices from different corners of the world, we are, we are able to help the education improve. And uh, uh, in, in this kind of spotlight collaborations, which we are now uh, doing uh, together with Qatar Foundation, we really want to understand better what is the context of education in Qatar, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of challenges, but also opportunities you face in your daily work and how you, ha how you have been improving the way what you are doing in the classrooms and schools. So uh, I hope that many of you will be submitting your solutions and practices you have been using in your school to this Qatar Spotlight. And uh, I wish all the best of you uh, for, for the coming coming months and weeks. Um, we know that, that this year across the world, especially in the field of education, has been very challenging mm. since we have been facing this pandemic uh, situation. And uh, I want to also thank you all the educators who have been working from their heart and soul to create these wonderful learning uh, solutions and, and possibilities for their students. So, First of all, welcome to this webinar, welcome to the 100 community, and now it's my great pleasure to introduce you our Head of Research, Chris Petri, who will explain more in detail how the Qatar Spotlight will work. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Lasse. Um, it was a great uh, introduction. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Chris Petri, um, Head of Global Research at 100. Um, I'm very, very pleased to be here and very happy to be speaking to you. Um, we actually wish we could be there in person. Um, and it, 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 at one stage, just before the, the pandemic hit, we were actually planning to, to, uh, go, to go there and, and do a few workshops. But alas, now we're in the, the land of uh, lots of uh, webinars. But again, thank you so much for your time. Um, as a prior like secondary school teacher, I know how um, time is precious and how you know tired you, you get at the end of the day so thank you so much and um, yeah uh, it's great to have you here so I'll just uh, briefly go over uh, what 
I'm going to talk about in the next, uh, say, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, we're just going to briefly look at uh, what we're looking for um, and also why, why to get involved in this, in this spotlight, what's in it for you and you know, potentially for others as well. Um, and we'll go over some examples of selected innovations that were spotlighted in other projects in the past. Um, and also we'll have some uh, questions, um, some poll questions uh, that we'll ask uh, uh, to kind of get you thinking about what you might uh, like to highlight. Um, and then uh, afterwards, I'll pass it over to Katija, uh, where, she, where she'll actually walk you through the easy process to get started um, for submitting uh, your innovation. Um, but, you know, you know, there'll be a lot of information that's presented to you as, you know, this is kind of like a, a lecture format um, to start with. And, you know, just know that we um, are happy to answer any of your questions at any stage, you know, whether it be at the end of this webinar or by email um, at, at a later stage. So, you know, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, so as Lassie uh, mentioned, um, you know, education always needs to be contextualized because every location has its own needs and demands that can be understood through both research and practice perspectives. Um, this Spotlight partners with the Qatar Foundations with a purpose to discover five to 10 of the brightest innovations, um, practices or solutions originating in the Qatar region or Qatar country, I should say. Um, the deadline for submissions is uh, at the end of February, 28th of February, uh, 2021. So you have, you have a few months. Um, however, we encourage you to submit as early as possible um, so that you may benefit from our, our review. We can help you through um, making the process as, as easy as possible, making your submission um, as, as, as best as it possibly could be. We can provide feedback and, and include additional information if necessary before the submission closes. So what we're looking for um, at 100, we improve education by helping impactful innovation spread. So we're kind of trying to act as this kind of global catalyst um, because we, to, to meet the challenges uh, education challenges facing the modern world. We believe that every context has practices and solutions that are worth uh, that are worth for others to know about. Um, these could be very, very simple and easy to implement practices that anyone can um, can use, or those that require new resources and and technology. So, you know, we're looking for you know, you know, even teacher led ones at a classroom level that you've that you've seen work really, really well within a classroom maybe at a school level, but maybe even bigger as well. Maybe you're uh, developing something on, on the side. And so there's two main, there's two main criteria that we, we, we use to assess um, who we might select um, for, for the spotlight. Um, those are impact and scalability. And so impact refers to as a, as a valuable improvement uh, within the innovations context. And so it also must have, has, uh, must have been implemented for at least a year uh, with its intended users. So it can't just be like an idea or at a pilot stage. It needs to have been actually implemented for, for, about a, you know, for at least a year in order to show some uh, efficacy or, or level improvement over and above the status quo. And just know that you know, by, the term, by the term innovation, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, absolutely new or novel, like it never has, heard, has heard, been heard before. It could be new for the context that it's in. So that means that you know, what's new for say Finland isn't necessarily new for um, you know, a country in, um, for the USA or for, for Australia or, or the UK so, or, or even Qatar. So, you know, every, every place has its own kind of practices and solutions that could potentially learn and benefit from one another. And then the second uh, criteria is scalability. So that means either the innovation is actively expanding to other contexts or has a high degree of transferability. So there's a potential that it could easily scale or easily be transferred to other contexts uh, to its adopt and perhaps, you know, adapt for its contextual um, contextual differences in each uh, region. Um, so if I can go to the next slide. 
Um, so why why might you get involved? So we we really value um, we we believe that every educator has some sort of practice and solution that that works for them that others could benefit from, and we really think that uh, others can learn from that that those kinds of insights. And so there's three main ways that we uh, try to help innovators or people uh, coming up with these practices and solutions. And that is first is uh, credibility. So 100 is recognized in the space of uh, K-12 education innovation globally, and we'll be actively promoting these solutions. Um, second is recognition, and is the opportunity to be celebrated as one of the best innovations in Qatar um, at a national and also global level. And then visibility, um, all selected innovations are documented in carefully formatted uh, two to three minute spotlight videos and shared on the 100 platform. Um, so this could mean that there's increased uptake in your school, impact for other schools, development, um, potentially commercialization, et cetera. Um, so we understand that everyone's at different stages of this process. You might just be, you know, like a teacher within your classroom that, you know, has found a really great way of, of uh, increasing student engagement, for example. Uh, we really want to hear about that level as well as, you know, the ones that might be developing a full on um, project or, or um, you know, like maybe even a, maybe even uh, like a company or a startup. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, we're going to just actually show you an innovation um, video. And I just want to make it very, very clear that you don't need to submit one of these videos. But I, I, we thought it would be really helpful for you to, uh, you know, uh, watch an innovator present their innovation and just to give you a sense of, of what it might be and also go through a couple of other examples as well. So if we can play the video now, um, that would be great. Hi, this is Reem Al-Frangi from Amman, Jordan. I'm the co-founder and managing partner of Habayibna.net. So to start with the word Habayibna, in Arabic, it means our loved ones. And we believe children with all abilities are our loved ones. Our story with Habayibna started 10 years ago when my husband and I knew that our both sons are having a developmental disability. And after being on this journey with them for the last 10 years and uh, meeting so many other parents like us, we realized that being a parent of a child with intellectual or developmental disability requires a lifelong adjustment that needs continuous learning, guidance, support, and resources. And based on the fact that we in the MENA region lack for the specialized uh, resources in Arabic, we launched Habayibna.net in December 2017 as a digital platform specialized in intellectual and developmental disabilities with the mission to educate parents and caregivers uh, and connect them with specialists and resources in special education and rehabilitation, aiming to improve the lives and the skills of children with intellectual or developmental disabilities so they can have a meaningful and productive life when they grow up with, with whatever abilities and talents that they have. So with Habayibna.net, we do three main things. We produce specialized content in Arabic. We provide the calls service and a directory. With the specialized content, we have two main sections. We built a free library of, uh, that includes more than 800 videos by specialists and parents sharing quick tips and advice uh, or general information for, uh, for parents on how they can deal with certain situations and you know, um, improve the lives of their loved ones. And uh, the, the, another part of uh, the specialized content uh, we started to produce online courses that are specialized in teaching parents how they can teach skills to their children. Uh, these online courses will be on demand, uh, made and presented by specialists in uh, qualified specialists in rehabilitation and special education using the micro-learning approach. 
focusing on the skills and how parents can teach these skills and transform their learnings into skills uh, for their children. With our call system, parents can easily and in few clicks call a specialist to have one-on-one -on -one guidance in special education or uh, any field of uh, rehabilitation um, to know how they can deal with specific matter that they're facing with their own child. And with the directory, we're listing available resources, tools, and um, services so parents can easily find their, these resources and reach to them. Uh, so what we do, we decided to, with Habayilna.net to focus on empowering the parents because we believe children with intellectual disabilities can have a meaningful and productive life if their parents could have the keys to unlock their future. And how did COVID affect our work? Actually, COVID came to improve and emphasize the importance of uh, what we do. And the online courses and the e-learning system was uh, developed in response to COVID and in response to the frequent feedback um, that we uh, used to get from parents on, uh, on that that they needed to learn how they can teach their child to speak, uh, to read, to write uh, during the lockdown. And um, with, we found with this online courses and with this digital platform, we can really enter every single house of every single parent, no matter where they are and whenever they need to empower their child. So we're so happy and so blessed and so privileged to be part of the, the new collection of the 100.org. And we're so happy to connect and network with any entity or institution that work in a similar field. Thank you. Okay, so... Um for a second. Um, thank you for, for listening to that. I mean, quite clearly they're, they're quite um, established in their, in their project. Um, and so just to reiterate again, you know, we're looking at the full spectrum of potential practice and solutions. So don't try not to be too intimidated by the, the scope of what they're, what they're working on. We selected them for a, a Lattice Global Collection um, and yeah, they're doing amazing, amazing work. Um, so now, to, now is a, um, I'm going to ask for the first poll to be shown, um, and this is just to give you some sense of uh, to get you to get you thinking about what what might you could what could you potentially submit, but also you know you know to to tell someone else that who might be uh, who you know might be able to submit something. And you could also collaborate together and think about how you might put something put something together. So. The question is quite um, quite simple. Um, what are, what of the following areas have you seen a new practice or solution being used, which has made the most difference to your work in the last one to three years? And so that could be something like student engagement, where um, maybe you're using uh, a, a certain kind of layout of the room, or maybe you're uh, adopting some interesting growth mindset practices. It could be around teacher de development where you're getting uh, different kinds of teachers from, from disparate, um, different, disparate subjects and, and institutions to collaborate together. It could be about student well-being, about the, especially during the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that has been particularly important as well as teacher well-being. It could be about uh, specific subject pedagogy it could be actual new tools and resources, including technology and digital solutions. It could be about engaging the parents more and more in the work. And we know that's been a big factor in, the, in the, the latest pandemic. Or it could be something else. So just think of the one that is the, the um, you know, one practice and solution that you can think of right now in the last one to three years that you think uh, might be really, really effective. Um, and then uh, I might give you perhaps 15 or 20 seconds to think about that, and then we'll show the results.
Okay, so hopefully most of you have um, submitted your answer or could think of something. Um, it can be quite difficult thinking about what is the what is the most the most effective one. Um, but if we can show the results now, we'll see what people came up with. So this is quite interesting, quite a spread, um, but interesting about student engagement. Um, I can completely understand that one of the one of the number one challenges of being a teacher is trying to get the student engaged. Um, and it's really great to see that that is the, the largest one. Um, so I'd really love to hear about those practice and solutions that you have seen work um, and they could all be potential submissions. Really great to see um, some on teacher development. We know this is a, a huge continuous issue. Student wellbeing, of course, extremely important. Perhaps teacher wellbeing, we could think about that a little bit more. Um, we know this is gonna be something um, that's gonna have increased importance in the future um, post, post pandemic. Subject specific pedagogy is always really important. New tools and resources, of course, and parental engagement. So really great to see a, a good spread there. So thank you so much for your answers. Now I'm gonna go through a few um, other selected innovations, just to give you a sense of the kinds of ranges that we've done for different projects in the past. Um, so the first one is Makerspace Days. Um, and that is based in, uh, for our Switzerland spotlight uh, that we did last, last year. Um, and then this is about high school students uh, setting up a one day workshop um, for sixth graders. So these workshops are run um, autonomously by the adolescents, um, the primary school children who, um, who, who work on the projects. So the high school students spend six months designing a one day workshop for the sixth graders. In preparation for the workshop, the students learn about various possibilities offered by the Makerspace, such as programming with Scratch, uh, 3D modeling with uh, Tinkercad and other various robotics options. Afterwards, the students decide on a topic they would like to explore further and they start preparing for the workshops. Under the guidance of the teacher, they plan the daily routine from the, uh, from the welcome to the concluding reflection. So in this practice, um, the role change from student to teacher is particularly important to the adolescents at the high school level. If we can go to the next slide. Uh, we're gonna to go to Teach the Teacher, uh, which is based in Australia. Um, this is uh, designed and run by students. Teach the Teacher uh, creates positive communities through student-led conversations. So another student-led one. Um, it is written and developed by students. Teach the Teacher is a student-led professional learning program for teachers uh, that empowers students to address uh, issues affecting them. Uh, this program creates an inclusive culture where students lead collaborative conversations with teachers and principals in a constructive and judgment-free environment. Um, and yeah, all, that's all I'll say about that one, but there's lots more information on our, um, on our website. And the last one I'll present is language sharing in Uvascular um, in Finland, uh, which is around about um, three hours or four hours away from here, from, from memory. Um, so the primary goal um, where we are based now in, in Helsinki, I should say. Uh, so the primary goal of this uh, solution is to create positive experiences of languages and language learning. Uh, language sharing is a method of foreign language teaching where preschool teachers at times use target languages during this children's everyday activities. The primary aim of the method is to provide positive experiences of languages and language learning. Um, in the city of Uvascular, uh, language sharing has become a permanent activity, creating positive experiences for all involved. Um, and there's lots more information about that one. Um, they, do, they do it um, as part of the early childhood education curriculum um, in the city of Uvascular, where the sharing languages are specifically English German, French, and Russian. Um, the variation of languages is up to the teachers. Some prefer to mix it up um, daily, but it's recommended to use one foreign language over a longer period of time so as to not confuse languages and to further support learning. And so this is a really great solution, example of something that could potentially be um, 
used in other in other areas of the world, um, not only within Finland but also um, other countries as well. That's quite um, simple to to implement. Obviously, needs to be contextualized for local needs and 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 that kind of thing. But um, a really great practice and solution there. Um, so. I'm gonna uh, have the second round of the poll uh, just to close off. And this uh, poll question asks, um, for the new practice and solution that you answered for in question one, if you can remember that, uh, put that in your mind. Um, could you see it being just as effective or helpful in another school, not only in Qatar, but in other countries as well? So. I know, I, I know from my experience being a teacher that there's so many great things happening in schools that uh, teachers are doing. And so I, I can imagine quite easily that that could potentially be adopted by different classes within the school, but also other schools as well. Not necessarily always the case, but um, quite often they, they can be given the right conditions. So just answer yes, no, and maybe for that one, I'll give you perhaps uh, 10 or 15 seconds to think about that. Okay, can we show the answers? Be interesting to see what people think. Great to see um, such a positive response. So this all of those ones that answered yes, you should definitely submit the solution um, and practice. We really want to know about them. Um, maybe even for the maybe ones and only, only one person answered no, you know. Um, so that's quite remarkable. Sometimes there are practice and solutions which are very, very difficult to be transferred and adopted in other contexts because they're so um, entrenched with resources and, and other complexities, but uh, we believe by and large, you know, there are learnings particularly uh, to be inspired from. And so I hope, I hope you, um, that, was, that was relatively clear. Again, please ask um, any questions along the way. We're more than happy to help as, as going forward. Um, right now, I'm gonna um, hand it over back over to Katija, who's actually gonna do a walkthrough of the submission process. So that'll illuminate that for you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Chris. It's always so inspiring to hear about the innovations. And like Chris said, we are excited to hear what you're doing in your schools because they're inspiring and they definitely deserve to be recognized. So now I'm just going to quickly walk you through the submission process. So we will first go to the 100 website. Great. And then you're going to click innovations. The tab and go to spotlights. You'll then scroll down to the Qatar spotlight, which is near the bottom, there we go. Once you get to this page, you will click the blue share your innovation button. You can submit in either English or Arabic. So this is the English form. These are only the descriptions that you need to submit. So it's quite a simple form. We wanted to make it super easy as we know you have lots going on. So a really easy form to fill out. Once you've filled out all the different parts, you will then click send. And once again, you can do this in both the English or also Arabic. So whatever you prefer, we accept both languages. And the Arabic side. So all the information is also available in Arabic for you, as well as the share your innovation button and the form as well is available in Arabic. So now to go back to the slides. And once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us during the Q&A period, but also afterwards if something comes up. So I'll now move on to our timeline for the spotlight. So like Chris mentioned, you have until February 28th to submit your innovation. On March 15th, the shortlist is created. So these are the innovations that are to be considered for the spotlight. We then will have an expert committee and selection process that happens in April. And the global announcement will be made in November. 
So right now, really the date to keep in mind is February 28th to submit your innovation. With that being said, one of my colleagues will actually link to the Spotlight page in the chat. So you can go there, save that link so you can submit your practice and solution. And we are now gonna move on to the question and answer period. So I will invite Chris back to the stage. And if you have any questions, please feel free to just raise your hand and we will then kind of bring you live so you can interact with the 100 team um, on the spot. But to start us off, we actually had a question in the Q&A box. So Isam Abdul Rahman asks, can the innovation be an idea or a method or should it be something touchable, materialistic? Yeah, um, short answer, it, it definitely can be an idea or a method. It just has to be implemented um, already in some way to show that there is some proof that th there is um, efficacy. In terms, of the, in terms of the proof, it doesn't necessarily need to be in terms of research reports or anything formal like that. You just need to be able to uh, give some evidence, maybe anecdotally, that it has been um, had some had some efficacy or some some effectiveness. Um, so short answer: yes, it can be an idea or method. Um, it can also be something touchable. Um, so any any anything of those. Great, thanks so much for that question. And just to mention again, if you do have a question, please feel free to raise your hand. This is also optional to stay for the Q and A period. So. That is a thank you for attending the session if you um, have to be somewhere, but if you do have a question and would like to ask it directly to the team, please feel free to do so by just raising your hand and we will get to you. While we wait uh, for people to generate some questions, I will just kind of mention some frequently asked ones. Uh, Chris, so what could impact look like for a teacher-led innovation? Yeah, so perhaps a, like a, a wide variety of, uh, of potential aspects. So it could be anecdotal ef evidence. It could be based on prior research that's already been done. So we, we know that there's, there's quite a lot of good educational research, which kind of confirms that a practice and solution could be effective for, for different contexts. Um, but also it could be like a pre and post survey um, it could be student student references, so um, you know, really you know it really could be anything we're we're willing to consider. But it, you, there needs to be some sort of articulation as to why it has been effective. Like it can't just um, we we're looking for something that's over and above the the status quo or what normally happens. Um, yeah. Right. Thanks, Chris. And yeah, just again, if you'd like to come on stage and interact with the 100 team, just raise your hand and we can bring you up. But we do have a question in the chat. Um, should we make a workshop about our innovation? Uh, I don't think you need to present a workshop to 100 per se. Like again, that video that uh, was presented earlier on, I know that's not a workshop, but there's no specific resources the innovation page on the 100 platform is meant as an overview. So to get people started to understand what it is and how it's pot potentially implemented, there needs to be more detail if they're actually going to be adopting and adapting it. But they don't, you don't necessarily need to do, um, to do a workshop at, um, at any stage. Great. Okay, so we have a few more questions in the Q&A box. So from Sarah Dugan, um, I have an innovation that is already in practice and I'm currently working on scaling it to other schools. Is that eligible? Absolutely, perfect candidate. So definitely. <laughs> sure. Looking forward to seeing your innovation form, Sarah. Um, we have another question from Isam Abdul Rahman. What's the criteria standard of shortlisting the innovations? So in that process, we're really looking for completeness um, it's, it's very just, you know, what is el eligible and what is not eligible um, at that stage. So quite often people potentially submit something that might, you know, might be just an idea or it might be something that 
may not necessarily uh, be scalable. So it might be something that requires a lot of, a lot of heavy handed resources um, and solutions. Um, in terms of the, in terms of the shortlisting beyond that, we're thinking about what is the, you know, we're looking for in, innovations that are highly impactful and highly scalable. So what's likely to be in those, to fulfill that criteria? If it's only a minor kind of uh, change or, you know, over what already happens in schools. And so that's, that's a really important thing for us to, you know, understand, you know, why is it, you know, a departure? Why is it going to have this, this huge impact uh, that we want to potentially transfer? That's great. These are great questions. Thank you so much. And just a reminder, if you would like to come and talk to us directly on stage, then please just raise your virtual hand and we'll get to you there. We have another question on the Q&A. Can it be locally and globally or it can be locally or globally? Yeah, both. Both. I mean, it has, has to be uh, founded in Qatar um, because it's get spotlight on Qatar. Um, but if it's already scaled or already transferred to other contexts, um, other countries, um, absolutely. Um, but it can't be potential, can't really be something that's founded in another country outside of Qatar and then transferred to Qatar that way, if that makes sense. Yes, definitely makes sense. Uh, another question in the Q&A from Magtesi Zaina. I'm a student in high school. Can I start it over the next few years? Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, you don't need to submit for this uh, particular spotlight. We'll have ongoing projects. Um, you may even like to, you know, get the get the put the idea up on the platform to start with, and just say, look, you know, we're we're starting to implement this because potentially it might become something that we'd select later for another project. Um, whether it be for Qatar or for um, our global collection or other other projects, um, so have a do have a look at our website for other spotlights that we're doing as well. Wonderful. And while we get a few more cute questions queued up, I have a few questions of my own. Um, can I submit an innovation with another teacher? This has come up a few times. Can you submit an innovation with another teacher? Absolutely, we're, we're encouraged that. So cooperation and collaboration across stakeholders, across subject, across subject lines, across age groups. We love to see that. And we think we, we would love to see much more of that happen in education. So absolutely. Wonderful. And can a whole school submit an innovation? Again, absolutely. If it's a, something that's working really well within the school, other schools might be really interested and in, uh, be inspired by, by its uh, example. For sure. And we have any more questions? Just, just one thing I would say about more kind of organizational level ones, like school led ones. Do think about who might lead the the you know, the um, innovation from the, um, from hundreds point of view. So we do need like a key contact point that we can be in touch with and to, you know, ask about how it's developing. So um, that might not be obvious currently, but think about who might lead this, this process. Wonderful. And we have a question from David Heaton. What rewards can we expect if our innovation is used? So the main the main thing is is uh, those three those three aspects that I mentioned uh, before, uh, which was uh, credibility, recognition, and visibility. But in addition to that, we do offer connections um, through our Hundred Connect uh, program. We would try and connect you to multiple stakeholders uh, in education. So we're we're quite quite privileged that we know some of the best people in education across the world at the moment. Um, like whether they're innovators, whether they're policy makers, whether they're funders who are funding innovations, um, whether they're implementers like networks of schools or even, even our, our um, global ambassador uh, program where we've got over 700 ambassadors from over uh, 100 countries um, that can potentially like think about your innovation in another context as well. So it's really, um, in a nutshell, it's about helping these practice and solutions be inspire others and potentially implement them in other contexts as well. 
So whether that's um, that's both you know potentially for profit and not for profit as well. Great, thanks, Chris. Uh, are there any other questions that anyone have has before we kind of close out this session? It seems like the questions are dwindling down a little bit now. And we will be sure to put the link to submit your innovation in the chat, just so you have it, you can save it to do it later or now, whatever you prefer. So I'd just like to close out the session by thanking everyone so much for joining us. Oh, do we have one more question? Is there a limit to our innovation? Is there limits to how many innovations we submit? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So um, there's no limit. Um, so if you have three practices and solutions, um, great, submit them. But you know, we do um, we do want you to really focus on one, you know, you know, one particular one because you know, <laughs> time, there's only so so much people can do, and and so you know, it's a little bit like, um, you know, potentially helping others uh, to to implement it. Would really appreciate you to kind of focus on, you know, like maybe one or two and doing those really well, but absolutely. Great, okay, so being mindful of everyone's time, thank you so much. Thanks to Jennifer Lasse also for joining us at the beginning, Chris for explaining the research process and the submission process. We're really excited to see your innovations come through and have a look at them. So thank you again for being here. Romaine has put in the link to submit your innovation in the chat. So please do have a look. And once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks again, have a lovely evening.